Right, so afternoon everyone. Um, team sheet is out. I've not really been looking into Newcastle news much this week. As soon as J Willock was signed, so things were a bit busy at home. So I'm a little bit concerned as to why Cher and LaSalle aren't in the team. But anyway, let's go through it. So we've got Freddie Woodman in goal. Obviously, we know why. Um, Dubravka and Darlow. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot his name there. Dubravka and Darlow both injured. Um, so it's a good opportunity for Freddie Woodman. You know, he's someone that Newcastle fans have been excited about for a couple of years now. Um, obviously, he's done really well on loan at Swansea. So this could be, this could be his chance. Although, as showed with last season with Carl Darlow, regardless as to how you perform, as soon as he's fit and ready, the brave cut is going to come back in. But um, Freddie Woodman, obviously, he's been with the club for years. He's a local lad. You know, if he could force himself into that number two spot and oust Darlow, which, for Darlow's sake, I you know, hope doesn't happen. He doesn't necessarily deserve it. But if, if that could happen, you know, there's a lot of things going for Freddie Woodman. You know, let's talk about Arsenal wanting him. Now, this run of games he's going to get, whether it be one, two, three, four, five, whatever, you know, could be a big factor in him staying at the club should Arsenal keep um, pushing. Um, so he's in goal. Now, I'm assuming it's the 5-3-2 or 3-5-2 in, in attack, whichever way you want to look at it. All right, Bobby. Sorry, you got a week and a half year old son in the back, taking him to his first, uh, watch his first Newcastle game on mate's place. Um, so we've got three cent central defenders. Now, I'm assuming you're going to have Kieran Clark on the left, Federico Fernandez in the middle, although I like him on the right hand side, and then um, Emil Kraft on the right hand side. Again, I'm concerned as to no Fabian Scher, no Jamal Lascelles. That does concern me, but it is what it is. I'm sure the reasons will come out. The reasons probably already out there. Like I said, I've not really given it my full attention this week um, due to other things. But there's the three centre halves. Left wing back, obviously Matt Ritchie. Mainstay of the team, um, our best run of the season coincided with him coming back into the team, a real leader on the pitch as well. Uh, Jacob Murphy, right hand side, I thought he really struggled um, right back in a flat four, like he did against, I think it was Leeds, the first Leeds game. But right wing back, he, he's, he's doing well, obviously, he's, he's got the attacking credentials, you know, he can supply a great cross, he's a good dribbler. The main thing I like about him is, and I've said numerous times on this channel, numerous times, is um, he doesn't play with fear. You know, he, he takes, he tries things. He's not afraid to shoot from 35, 30, 35 yards if he thinks it's on. He's not afraid of his teammates giving him stick and Matt Ritchie, you know, giving him out for not passing it. You know, he's not afraid to take people on. You could call that ignorance. I don't think so. It's just he's not afraid. Um, but defensively, he's really improved as well. He's still a young guy, so um, he's only going to get better defensively, you know, once he learns things. Uh, arguably one of our best players last season as well. Now, in the midfield, you have Isaac Hayden. Good, good to see him back. Obviously, he missed a chunk of the end of the season last season. But a terrific player, one of the unsung heroes of the Premier League. I would say one of the unsung heroes of Newcastle, which he used to be. Not anymore, people have started to click on how good he is. But he's one of the unsung heroes of the Premier League. He is so good at what he does. He's not glamorous, but he does the hard work. He's smart. He, good positioning. He, he covers off well. And he just cuts out the passing lanes just through being there. Just reading things. He's a fantastic player. Um, then we have, alongside him, we have John Shelby, who is one of my... <coughs> one of my flip-flop players because I thought last season he, for the majority of the season I thought he was rubbish I didn't want to see him anywhere near that team sheet I thought he was lazy just didn't run didn't look up for it but back end last season he was very good he was an improved player um, he was injured obviously in pre-season he came back played in the Norwich game um, obviously didn't see that game but by all accounts he was very good now, I just had my mate, obviously the West Ham fan, just text me just now, as soon as the team sheet came out, said, oh, John Joe Shelby rolling his eyes, saying that 
he's going to turn on Brian Pirlo. But in fairness, John Joe Shelby does have an incredible record for Newcastle against West Ham. I think, you know, I think he scored a couple of free kicks against them in the 1920 season. I'm sure he scored in the in the, that two-all draw. <clears throat> you know, he, he does have a very, very good record of playing well against West Ham, which is ironic because he's been linked with West Ham, linked with a move to West Ham for years now. Years now. And, and West Ham fans is, do seem to give him a lot of stick. Um, but yeah, not one of my favourite players, but on his day, don't get me wrong, on his day, he is very, very good. My criticism of him has been that day does not come uh, frequently enough, but we shall see. Mickey Almron, who I'm assuming will play, he'll either go drift slightly wide when, when we're in the 5-3-2, or he might just be at the, at the point of that three in midfield. He might just be at the point of that three in midfield. Um, this is his fourth season now. I know he was signed in January of the 18-19 season. Obviously, the shirt I've got on now, the 18-19 season. Um, you know, this is his fourth season now. Um, I think he really needs to start kicking on with some goals and some assists. The talent is there. Um, the capability is there. The work rate is there. It's just, I don't know. He... Come on, don't let him take the piss. It's all right away. Um, he... What is his issue? I, I don't really know. I say the talent is there. It's a bit like Shelby. The talent is there. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm sort of disagreeing with myself here. You say that. But his... He, we don't see it often enough. You know, it, it, it was like the, the goal against Bournemouth last season, the back end, when we beat them 4-0, 4-1 or something. What? Class. Drifted through good pace and just like floated it in with his right foot in the opposite corner and made it just made it look a piece of piss yet other times you put him through one on one and he either hits the softest shots you've ever seen or he takes too many touches and get closed down um, I think he does get a, a bit too excited sometimes I think he could just do with a bit of that killer instinct um, that someone like uh, Callum Wilson has but on his day good player um, one thing you cannot criticise is his energy, his enthusiasm, his passion, his work rate. It's probably only second to Matt Ritchie and, and that, that's not a criticism, you know. He's, you cannot criticise his work rate, he, he puts in such a shift for the team. Um, and his pace as well, he's very quick, very quick. Right, so there are your three midfielders, uh, moving up to the front two now. Alan Samaxaman and Campbell's. Now, happy with that. I, and probably most people, prefer to see ASM out of the wing, doing his stuff, particularly back at a Pax and James's Park, all the tricks and flicks. But he is effective as a striker, and he's, he doesn't play as a striker like Callum Wilson does. You know, he will drop them deeper probably allow him and Miggy will probably interchange a lot I would imagine I, I hope that to see that you know they will sort of occupy that space in between the West Ham defence and the midfield uh, you know playing little trick little flicks off each other little give and goes one twos and he does he has that searing pace when we need it on the break he has all the ability in the world he's showed that he's capable of scoring goals um, but I think Alan Samaxaman, again, much like Miggy, you know, this is his third season now. And I know he's had his injuries, but he needs to kick on. I, I, I expect, because barring either loads of little niggly injuries that keep him out a long time, or barring a big injury, Alan Samaxaman should be hitting 8, 9, 10 goals in the Premier League. Should be. Because he's got that ability, he's got that pace. Right, his finishing isn't amazing, but right, we, we take you know some of the goals he has scored have been incredible. Like one that doesn't get talked about enough for me, that one against Man United, you know, on the volley, fantastic. So he should be aiming high. 
um, obviously yeah. okay buddy he has that good connection that good um, partnership with Callum Wilson they get on obviously you saw the Callum Wilson quote come out this week about that he's ready to rock and roll for the season and he's going to kick um, Alan up the ass to make sure he is as well Wilson is one of those so we'll go on to Wilson now he's one of those strikers who he's got all the ability um, he's got good pace ok pal he's got good pace he's obviously an incredible finisher he works well but he's he's not like a target man blood you know force trauma like your Duncan Ferguson or your Andy Carroll or your you know someone like that like or a proper proper hard man like I don't know, a Troy Deeney or again Duncan Ferguson or something like that. But he's no shrinking violet. He's not afraid to say what say what he thinks. Uh, a bit like Suarez in that regard. Um, obviously not on the same level as Suarez, but you know he, he's got the skill. But he, he's, he seems nasty. He enjoys the confrontation with defenders, and he, he's not shy of um, letting people know if they're not putting the ball in early enough, or if they're not supplying the right crosses or doing something wrong. So. I think ASM does need that some, sometimes, sometimes, not often, but sometimes he just needs and a player who is arguably the main player for us. You know, Callum Wilson, he is the number nine. I can't wait to see him in half an hour running out to St. James's Park for the first time in that number nine shirt in front of a full house. Oh my God. If he scores, the place is going to go. The place is going to go. And Wilson is going to realise how much he is loved at this club. But anyway, with him and Sir Maximan, I think it just helps that Wilson, you know, can say to Sir Maximan, look, I'm the fucking main man. I'm the number nine. I'm the striker. I'm, I'm, I'm going to score 20 goals this season. You need to give me the ball now. So it's, it's good. It'd be good. Um, I'll be honest, I've not looked who's on the bench. Um, but I hope that this team... We can get off to a good start. Obviously, the, the fans are going to be on Bruce's back. Hopefully, not too much. You know, let, 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 let's get beyond the players. You know, let's get beyond the players. I don't want to see Bruce at this club any more than most of the fans. But let's get beyond it and support the players for this first game. I'm getting nervous now. Right, up the tune. Come on, boys. Um, actually, before we go, my quick prediction. I've said to a few people I'd be happy with the draw. I'm going to predict a 2-1 Newcastle United win three points Anderson Maximan and Callum Wilson the goal scorers come on